In this video we're looking at a fairly typical manometer problem where we're trying to measure the pressure in a pipe, PA, using a manometer where we've got two fluids. The first fluid is the water from our pipe and that has a specific gravity of 1 and the second fluid is our gauge fluid which is mercury which has a specific gravity of about 13.6. And by looking at the two heights of these fluids, we can measure the pressure in the pipe PA. For this example, the height of water, H1, is 0.2 metres. The height of our mercury, H2, is 0.3 metres. And we're trying to measure the pressure PA. But before we try to solve the problem, it's worth just taking a second to think about why the manometer is designed like this and the actual physics behind how it works. So what we need to remember in all of these type of problems is that the pressure of a fluid is equal to the density of that fluid times by acceleration due to gravity times by the height of that fluid. So that gives us the static pressure of a fluid so if we think of an example of a flow, we think of a river. Which is flowing. And our river is has a water level of some height h. So if we want to calculate the static pressure of this river, all we need to do is enter into our calculation the density of water, acceleration due to gravity and the height of our flow h. So it's quite a straightforward calculation. But if we imagine now that exactly the same flow is put inside a pipe, it's now a bit more tricky to measure the pressure because the water isn't finding a free surface, it's just pushing against the wall of the pipe. So whereas In our example with the river, the water pressure will cause it to find a free surface. With inside our pipe, the pressure is just pushing against the wall of the pipe instead of forming a free surface. So just by looking at the pipe, we can't work out the pressure. What we can do is take our pipe and drill a small hole in the top of it and put a tube out the top. And what will now happen is the water that was pushing against the wall of our pipe will now form a free water surface. Okay, this is called a pesometer. And now by measuring the height the water comes to H, we can calculate the static pressure in the pipe in exactly the same way that we did for the river. So what we have here in our pesometer is a system that lets us measure the pressure in a pipe. So if we have a pipe flow, the water will come up to a certain level, we'll call it height h, and we can calculate the static pressure in that pipe, pressure as the density of the water times by gravity, times by the height the water comes to in the pesometer. Okay, the problem with this system is that if we think about normal distribution networks, they often operate at relatively high pressures. Okay, so what we can start to think about is what height well, our pesometer need to be to measure the pressure of water in a pipe. So we can rearrange this equation to work out what height the pesometer needs to be to measure the pressure in a pipe, which would be the pressure in the pipe over the density of water over gravity. Now in standard distribution networks the pressure is often something like P is equal to 500,000 newtons per meter squared. So if we put that into this calculation what we can see is that 500, 500 newtons per meter squared 
over the density of water times by acceleration due to gravity gives us a height h of about 51 meters. Okay, now if you think about a piezometer pipe coming out the top of a water pipe 51 meters into the air, that's quite an impractical height to measure the pressure of water. So what we need to think about is how we can reduce this height h to a practical level. So if we think again about the design of our piezometer and think about how we can reduce this height h, we can look at the terms in the equation. So we can't change the pressure p because that's what we're trying to measure. We can't change the value of gravity. But what we can change is the density of the fluid that we're using to measure the pressure. So if we think we've got our water in a pipe and that comes up a little bit of the piezometer but then we replace some of that water with a fluid of a much higher density the higher that density the lower our H is going to be so if we replace it with something like mercury that has a specific gravity of 13.6 which means it's 13.6 times more dense than water what that means is the height of that fluid in our gauge is going to be 13.6 times less than if it was just water. So we're now going to go from having a piezometer that's maybe 51 meters high to something just a few meters high. The problem with this system however is that if we say turn off the pipe and the pressure goes to zero what's going to happen is the water is going to drain out of the pipe and our mercury is just going to fall down into the pipe and disappear with the water. So every time we turn the system off we're just going to lose our gauge fluid. So what we can do instead is instead of taking the pipe out the top of the pipe we can take our gauge pipe out the side and loop it around and back up and this is our YouTube manometer. So what's going to happen now is the water is going to come to a certain point and then again we replace some of that water with mercury and now the height of this mercury and the height of the water can give us an indication of pressure but if we turn off the flow like in our previous example what now happens is instead of the mercury falling into the bottom of the pipe it now will just rest in the bottom of that U-tube and when we turn the flow back on and the water pushes back up the manometer it will just push this mercury back up to the position it was at before. So hopefully that gives a little bit of an idea behind the design of the manometer. So we can go back now and start to think about how to solve this problem. Okay. First thing we need to do with these types of problems is look at the YouTube and draw an imaginary line on our manometer along the line where water is level on both sides. Okay, so that line, we've got water all the way up this pipe, but on this side it only comes to this level, so the line at which water is level on both sides is about there. Okay, and there's two things we can say about this line. First of all, we can ignore everything that's going on below this line. The reason for that is that we're going down on this side by some height, but then we're coming back up on the other side by the same height. So what that means is that as we go down on this side, we gain pressure due to that height, but then we lose exactly the same amount of pressure as when we go back up on the other side. So the pressure difference underneath that line is zero, so we can just ignore everything going on there. So all we need to think about is the height of fluid above that line to the point in the pipe we're trying to measure the pressure of and the height of the gauge fluid above that line. What we can also say if the system is in equilibrium i.e. if none of these fluids are moving up or down then what we know is that the pressure pushing down on this side of the line must be the same as the pressure pushing down at this side of the line. If one side has more pressure than the other then the fluids will be moving so if they're all static, which is the assumption we often make in these problems, we know that the pressure pushing down on this side must be equal to the pressure pushing down on this side. It's just like a set of scales that aren't moving. 
if scales aren't moving it's because the weight is the same on both sides and if we find our level here we know that the pressure on this side is the same as the pressure on this side. So when we make that assumption we can start to think about how to solve this problem. Um, the first thing we need to remember always is that pressure is the density of the fluid times by gravity times by the height of the fluid. Okay, so if we try to formulate this problem mathematically, what we need to do is work out all of the pressures pushing down on this side of the line and equate them to all of the pressures pushing down on this side of the line. So what is pushing down on this side of the line? Well, firstly, we have the pressure in the pipe that we're trying to measure, PA. Then we have the pressure due to this height of water, H1. So that's going to be the density of water, we'll call that density 1, times by gravity, times by H1. And that's all going to be equal to the pressure on this side of the pipe. So what pressures do we have on this side? First of all, we have atmospheric pressure pushing down. So we have P ATM. And then we have the pressure due to this height of mercury. So we'll call the density of mercury density 2 acceleration due to gravity and height 2. And what we can do is rearrange this equation for PA. So PA will be equal to PATM plus the density of mercury times gravity times the height of mercury minus the density of water times gravity times by the height of water. What we often do when we solve these problems is we assume atmospheric pressure to be zero. The density of mercury, well we know the specific gravity of mercury is 13.6 and the specific gravity gives us the factor of the density of the fluid compared to water so we know that mercury is 13.6 times more dense than water so the density of mercury is 13.6 times 1000 times by acceleration due to gravity times by the height of our mercury and then we minus that from the density of water times acceleration due to gravity times by the height of water and if you put that into a calculator it should all come out as 38062.8 newtons per meter squared and that is how we calculate the pressure PA in our pipe using our YouTube manometer.